The Lord be with you. This is Pastor Matthew Barrasso of Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church in Parkton, Maryland. What follows is the service of the Word for the third Sunday in Lent. There will be no hymnody, and I will be speaking all of the parts. Feel free, if you have a hymnal at home, uh, to turn to setting three in that hymnal and follow along as you are able. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause now for silent personal reflection. We confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. At Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for the joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray together the collect of the day. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for the Old Testament, from the Old Testament for this, the third Sunday in Lent, is recorded for us in Exodus chapter 17, beginning with the first verse. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirst there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it. 
and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We recite the gradual. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle lesson is recorded for us in Romans chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. When Holly and I uh, put our boys to bed at night, we regularly say prayers with them. 
uh, for a while it started out with just now I lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep I'm sure you are familiar with that uh, then we added the Lord's Prayer to the routine, and recently we added the Apostles' Creed too. So the other night, uh, I was putting my oldest son down to bed, and he asked to say the Apostles' Creed with me. So I started, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and continued on and, and got to the end. You know, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And Enzo, he's getting more familiar with it, so he's saying parts along where he can. Uh, but when I get to the end, he says, no, Dad, that's not right. Now, it took quite a bit of restraint on my part, not to point out that I've been saying that thing since well before he was born, uh, mostly in English, but I can also read the thing in Greek, you know, not to push back on him too much. Uh, so I said, what do you mean? And he goes, that's not the right ending. Now, I thought that meant he wanted me to say the one we say most Sundays at Redeemer, the Nicene Creed. So I ask him if he wants to say that one. He says, yes. So I recite it, and I get through the end, and he goes, no, Dad, that's not right. And at this point, he's starting to get emotional about it. Tears are starting to form uh, in his eyes. Uh, and then he says, in this small little voice, the evil foe. And I instantly knew what he was talking about. You see, the night before, uh, I had, for the first time, gone through Luther's evening prayer with him. Now, you know you've kind of made it as a parent when your kid starts to cry because he wants to say Luther's evening prayer. Uh, and I, as I was reflecting on it, I wondered if it was just that he wanted to do the new thing again, or if he really felt protected because of that line, right? The line that he remembered, let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. When I was talking with Holly about it later that night, she said uh, when he went down for a nap, he asked for something similar and said the word power. But she didn't know I had gone through uh, with the, uh, him the night before with uh, Luther's evening prayer, so it didn't click in her mind. And, and so I continue to wonder, right? I, I wonder if it's just the part he remembered or if it was something more. Because sometimes I think it is something more for us than just words. We want to feel. We want to see. We want to experience what the words mean. We don't just want to hear them. We want what they actually point to. Now, we are given three texts today, ones I think we are fairly familiar with, and ones we could easily spend the entire morning, you know, considering the finer points of, only I'm not going to talk about just one today. I want to talk about all three. The first is in the book of Exodus. You remember what happened. Uh, God has heard the cry of his people, right? They are suffering in slavery. He has raised up Moses, who has delivered his people from Pharaoh with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And when they came to the Red Sea with the water in front of them and Pharaoh and his army behind them, through Moses, God split the sea and allowed his people to cross on dry land. And now, as they are traveling through the wilderness, right, they, they come to a place where they have no water, and the people um, did what they do best. They complained. Why did you bring us out here, Moses, right, to, to kill us and our children and our livestock? And, and Moses is rightly annoyed, uh, and he goes to God and says, what shall I do with this people? And God tells him, go, take some of the elders, take the staff, right, that I've given you, uh, uh, and strike a rock, and water will flow from it. God has literally brought them out of slavery, and they are complaining to him that they still have need, right, that they have no water, that they were brought out just to die. Can you think of anyone more ungrateful? And yet God does not say to them, no water for you. No, he gives them what they do not deserve. Water from a rock. God gave them, in a word, grace. Now in our epistle lesson, we hear about something else God gave his people, namely his son as a substitute. Paul's letter to the Romans takes the time to unpack what it means to be justified by grace, to have peace with God on account of the work of Christ. This is what is going on in the text this morning, right? We have peace with God 
because of Christ. And more than that, we can rejoice in our suffering because suffering produces character, character hope, and hope does not disappoint us because of the love that God has poured into our hearts through the Spirit. God has given us something that has fundamentally changed our perspective to the point where we can rejoice in suffering because we know where it leads. And we can do this not because of anything we have done, but because of what Christ has done. Because Christ has taken on the punishment we deserve, we can have peace. Because Christ has suffered for the ungodly, we can receive salvation and hope and love through the work of the Spirit. In other words, God did not give us what we deserved when we were his enemies, when we were ungodly. No, while we were sinners who deserved death, who deserved to be at enmity with God, who did not deserve his love, who did not deserve the perspective that reshapes our lives, Christ died for us. God gave us, in a word, mercy. Now, our gospel text tells of a woman who goes to the well at noon in the heat of the day because she is likely sick of hearing everything people are saying about her. As we heard, she does not have the best of histories, and this is on top of the fact that she is a Samaritan. And Samaritans are outcasts. Right? They are those who used to be pure-blooded Hebrews, but during captivity intermarried, and then were considered to be half-bloods, to be considered dogs by some. So the fact that a Jewish man of any standing would come up to her and ask her for water is scandalous in and of itself. These two people should not be talking at all. But that doesn't stop Jesus. She tries to protest, Sir, if you knew who I was, you wouldn't ask me for water. If you knew who was asking you, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for the water I have. She continues to push back. <clears throat> this was our father Jacob's well. Are you saying that you're greater than him? If you drink from this water, you will be thirsty again. But anyone who drinks from the water I give, they will never be thirsty. She gives some more replies, right? I think it's safe to say that she thinks he is talking about uh, not ever physically needing water again, because she doesn't want to have to come back to the well. She doesn't want the shame and enmity with the community to be front and center anymore. So when Jesus says, go get your husband, she says, I don't have one. You're right, says Jesus, you've had five, and the one you're with now isn't your husband, and she perceives him to be a prophet. But as you well know, Jesus is never just a prophet, and he helps her to see that. She knows that when the Messiah come, comes, he will tell all things. And Jesus replies, I am he, the Messiah, the Christ who comes, the one who, especially during this time of year, we remember goes to the cross to die for the ungodly, for those who have had five husbands, for those whose blood is tainted with sin. He is the one who goes to that woman and brings her back into a right relationship with God. Jesus gives her more than water. He gives her, in a word, peace. Well, uh, when we were learning to preach at the seminary, we were told to find a consistent phrase to open and close your sermon so that your hearers know it's starting and ending. Now, some use the intro I use, some say at the beginning and at the end, in the name of Jesus, or in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Far and away, though, the one I've heard the most, and the one I would bet most preachers in the Missouri Synod use, are the ones Paul used to open many of his letters. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we preachers, like I said, are told to use them to signal the beginning and or the end, but these are not just words that clue you in on where we are at in the sermon. In fact, these are more than just words. Grace, mercy, and peace, these are the things that God gives. And today in our text, we see God giving them grace in the form of water, mercy because of what he did, and peace because of who he was. This morning, we have seen God at work in those stories. We have seen that they are not just word, that words, that God actually does give people things they do not deserve, that he spares them what they do deserve, and that he brings peace through his Son. 
and as Lutherans, we know that words from God are more than mere words. They actually deliver something. This morning we saw and heard God delivering grace, mercy, and peace through those texts, but those texts are not the only places he delivers the goods to you. No, he did it at the font, where water brought grace with it. And when we make the sign of the cross in remembrance of our baptism, when we confessed our sin, God gave us not only grace but mercy. He spared us the condemnation we deserve because he has already laid the burden upon Christ who went to the cross and left the tomb in his wake. And that victory, that grace, mercy, and peace, we regularly get the opportunity to taste it, even if we aren't able to taste it this morning. We know what it is to chew and swallow it because Christ has brought us what he brought that woman, peace in the form of himself. Grace, mercy, and peace are not simply words. They are what God has given his people throughout the ages and what he continues to give you today. Through water, through word, in, with, and under bread and wine. It isn't just about opening or closing a sermon. It's about pointing you to what God does for you. What God is continuing to do for you in these times where we are not able to gather together God still gives you his gift of the word. God gives you grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers this morning, we will be praying the litany as opposed to the normal prayers uh, that we offer on a weekly basis. And as I said before, I will pray both parts, but uh, at home you are encouraged to Participate as you are able. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil. From the crafts and assaults of the devil. From sudden and evil death. From pestilence and famine. From war and bloodshed. From sedition and from rebellion. From lightning and tempest from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, 
Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give all peoples concord and peace. To preserve our land from discord and strife. To give our country your protection in every time of need. To direct and defend our president and all in authority. To bless and protect our magistrates and all our people. To watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. To protect and guide all who travel to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.